Shalom friends, shalom, grace and peace be unto you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Apostle Claudia Morgan Senior and as always it's a privilege to meet with you as we look into the word of the Lord. I pray you're all well. I pray you actually had a great week, you know, and you would have experienced God's faithfulness in your life. You would have experienced his blessings, his healing, his salvation, his deliverance, his provision, and all the good promises that he has in store. I pray you are indeed enjoying the blessings of the Lord. The fact that we're alive is a great blessing. You know, there is so much to be thankful for. Moses declares that the dead cannot praise you. And so while we have life, we use the breath that we breathe to bring glory to God in every possible area in our lives. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the journey to your destiny. We are going to be looking at just two verses from Numbers chapter 33, actually verse one and two. And it is a command that God gave to Moses. And he says, it says, here are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by divisions under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. What are we to learn from this? We're going to be learning that in life, we go by stages. We move from stage to stage to stage. And I believe that we're going to be learning a lot today as we basically close out the reading of um, the book of Numbers. We are all on a journey. And uh, this will eventually come to an end, right? But this journey, the journey through life, is not a journey that is, it's not a random journey. It's a journey that should be very intentional. And with this, we should be determined to live our lives purposefully and intentionally. Why? Because there is an end goal to the journey. The journey to your destiny is not always easy. It's not as straightforward as we would hope. We know that. It comes, uh, the journey through the desert of life is filled with curves and valleys and mountains and precipices and pitfalls and um, very rough terrain, right? But in spite of what it offers, we cannot give up. We must get to the place called destiny. We must get to what is called the promised land that God has purpose for you, that God has purpose for me. He has given us a manual, right? And this manual gives the instruction for life. It gives the, 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 you know, the, the, the instructions as to how we live and the guidance in fulfilling this journey, our purpose. And so we know that we are not alone. We are not alone. So this was the life of Israel as they journeyed through the wilderness to the promised land. So for the past weeks, we shared on different insights from the different sections from the book of Numbers that offers both spiritual and physical lessons for life, which I believe are very useful for the very journey that we are on. One of the most powerful insights for me was the fact that in knowing that the wilderness is not as bad as how we tend to look at it sometimes, because the wilderness is the place where God speaks. It's a place where we hear his voice. And if we stop to listen long enough and pay attention we will hear his voice. If our hearts are at the right place, he's going to speak to us. 
and we're going to hear his voice. So when we go through the dark moments, the different moments of life, I also know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So the wilderness is really the training ground, my personal development, right? So let us look at this. God brought Moses into the wilderness to speak to him through a burning bush, right? He also brought Elijah into the wilderness to speak to him in a very still, small voice. And so for us, he is taking us through our own wilderness, the wilderness of our life, of this life, the journey that we are on. And he will speak to us and he is going to draw us into greater intimacy with him if that is really our heart's desire. You know, God doesn't push himself on us. He doesn't force himself on us. It all happened by our choice, what it is you desire, what it is you really want. And so, yes, the wilderness as we look on it, and um, you, you probably could just, I, I did a teaching on the, on the, the, the holiness of the wilderness. It's on the channel. So I would encourage you to check it out because I'm sure it will also bring a blessing to you. So as I mentioned, um, yes, we're in the last reading portion of the book of Numbers. And uh, from the verse, verses that I just read, we learn it took, um, here it is. The command is that Moses is to record the stages in their journey. And so if you go through the, the, the chapters, it gives all the details, all the instructions of what happened, right? We learned that it took 42 stages for Israel to journey from Egypt to Israel within a period of 40 years. And uh, the number 42 in scripture speaks to the generations. We learn of the different generations from Abraham to the time of Messiah. And so on each stage of the journey, we know that God's divine presence was very, very visible. Talks about the pillar of cloud by day and about the pillar of um, fire by night and how the cloud would hover over the camp. And it, it, it was signal for the people when to move, when not to move, when to stay, when not to stay. Whenever the cloud was stationary, they were also stationary. Whenever the cloud moved, they moved, they followed the instruction, right? And so this is what happened through the, the 42 stops and starts to get Israel to the land of promise. It tells us something about the journey, the journey of life. It means for us that, you know, our spiritual antennas must be up and our hearts have to be at the right place to hear the instructions, what God is saying to us, when to move, when not to move. When he closes a door, we understand that he is closing the door. When he opens a door, we understand that what means right and so it, it is important that we are hearing that our spirit is really in tune with god the truth is sometimes we get stuck into a place where god desires to take us to different levels of our life but we you know we, we are comfortable in where we are at right but the journey of life is not always that easy and if we look at we could look at King David, for example. And I believe his story has much value for us. Throughout his journey to the throne of Israel, he faced many obstacles. On the journey, he faced many obstacles. And I felt his father was the first obstacle. I felt his brother Eliab was also an obstacle because he saw David as a mischief maker. And King Saul, of course, the greatest of all his obstacles, right? But on the journey, 
King Saul was bent on killing David. And for many years, David had to be in hiding because of Saul. So Saul thought that to kill David means killing the prophetic word, the prophetic calling of God upon his life. Uh, Saul thought that, you know, if he kills him, that's the end of his purpose. But that was not in God's plan, right? And so he, David became discouraged. He hit rock bottom. He was overwhelmed. He became fearful. He escaped. He went to hide into a cave. He behaved as if he was a madman at one time. David actually went in hiding. And so we, the cave, you know, is identified as a kind of stronghold. It's more like a fortified place and some bring some level of security, whatever that looks like. But the Lord, through the prophet God, sent a, a word to David and tell him, do not stay in this stronghold. Go to the land of Judah because you cannot fulfill destiny in hiding. Destiny cannot be fulfilled in hiding. And so it is important for us to understand and to be hearing what the Lord is saying to us and what instructions he is giving us as we, as we travel on this journey to our destiny. So the Torah states that there are, these are the journeys of the children of Israel. And so the question is asked, why was it important for Moses to record this information? right they traveled 40 years they moved 42 times and one other thing we, we we would notice here from reading is that we we talk a lot about israel in in the book of numbers right the journey what they did what they didn't do how they rebel how they complain how they just last week we were talking about how they get into into idolatry how they get into harlotry how they hurt the heart of God, right? All of these things were recorded. But one of the things that we noticed is that when, they, when it was time for them to move, they really didn't complain much about moving because they knew that each time they moved, it was actually taking them closer to the promised land because they had to go through the process, right? And I believe that the verse, as we read it, offers a uh, deeper meaning for us also it refers to the journeys through life of every individual to include us each of us every one of us we may be analyzed in terms of those stops and go moments and periods of disruptions the truth is there are times when people react negatively to the stops and the goes and those moments of disruption there are times when people tend to throw in the towel. There are times when people want to call, call it quit, when people want to surrender, right? There are times when people also use it as an opportunity to excel. It depends on you and it depends on your perspective. Each of us has situations which can be described, right? as we have our own limitations in different ways that could prevent us from fulfilling our, our goals, right? As we go on the journey to our destiny. Uh, God took Israel out of Egypt, right? For a purpose. And we talk about it on many occasions that Egypt is not just a, a land, a physical land or a geographical location, but it can also be a state of mind. And it refers to, from the Hebrew perspective, it refers to that place of narrowness, that place of limitations, that place of dire straits, where it feels as if you're cornered in and all of that, right? And God took us from there and going through the wilderness probably could appear as if, boy, you know, it, it is really hard going through all of these stuff, but we are on our, on a journey to, um, a, a spiritual perfection, as it were, we're on a spiritual journey, right? And there's an end goal to this. So it means that every time in life, 
we will continue to experience different situations in every, every given stage of our lives. We're gonna be presented with different types of obstacles. We're going to be presented with different types of testings. We're going to be presented with different types of struggles, right? And sometimes they can be overwhelmingly hard. But this is the confidence we have that as God was with Israel, the power, the, the pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, we know the same God we serve, the God of Israel, the God of our forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is with us. And he is defending us, right? So we continue through to overcome these difficulties and we find out or we will find out that as we overcome we are being strengthened and it also gives us a greater awareness of God a greater knowledge of God right it gives us a deeper um, desire to be with him and to learn and to grow in his presence we are reminded by the Apostle Paul that we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And that we are encouraged to, on this journey of life, that we put on the whole armor of God because we are in a battle. We are basically in a warfare, right? And we need to be fully armored. And the armor we need to put on is the armor of God. And so Numbers chapter 33, right? Um, it, it's like a, a rear view mirror, right? We look back and we see the value and the worth of the low moments, the times of mistakes, the times of rebellion, the times of ungratefulness, the times that we do stupid things, right? But it is also a reminder of God's faithfulness. It is also a reminder of his promises to us. It's also a reminder that his grace is sufficient to keep us on the journey to our destiny. His grace is sufficient to hold us, right? And so with this, we can move on in life and we are encouraged and we should also and as we encourage others, we, we, we should encourage ourselves in the word of God, right? That though you may go through dark moments now, the sun will shine again, right? Though it may not, it may not appear as if, you know, it, it may appear as if this is the end of it all, that with hope in our hearts, we know that there is, there is hope beyond the horizon. There is greater ahead of us. We have not seen the best of it yet because the apostle Paul says, eyes have not seen, neither ear heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has in store for those who would love him, for those who come into this covenantal walk of faith, for those who would live by his word, for those who would obey his commandments for life, for those who would live by his instructions, for those who would separate themselves from the darkness of this world. You do not know. You have not yet seen the fullness of what that looks like. And so I want to use this opportunity to encourage you and to encourage those who have not yet come into this covenantal walk, those who have not yet come into faith in the Messiah, those who have not come to acknowledge him as the son of God, those who have not yet come to acknowledge him as the one who shed his blood so that we can have life and the life is in the blood, right? I want to use this opportunity to encourage you to come into this journey, to come into this walk, because the end goal of it is marvelous. It's what, what was lost in, 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 in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis is actually restored in the book of Revelation. 
right? And so for this, we continue on the journey. And so the challenging moments are only for a time. It will not last forever. It will come to an end, people of God. The battles we encounter is a reality of our eternal destiny that we have to struggle, we have to fight, we have to endure, and we have to conquer. In First Timothy chapter 4, I think verse 12, the Apostle Paul charged his spiritual son Timothy to fight the good fight of faith and to lay hold on eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold, to lay hold on eternal life. And in verse 20 of the, the same chapter, he instructed him to guard what has been entrusted to your peer. And so on this journey, you have a responsibility. We all have a responsibility to guard and to protect that which God has entrusted to your peer. And we have a responsibility to be responsible and to be accountable. We have that responsibility to be accountable, right? And to be responsible to that which God has entrusted to us. And so my encouragement to you, my encouragement to you and to myself is that as we talk about Israel going through the wilderness, Israel did not live. They were never meant to live the rest of their lives in the, in, the, in the desert or in the wilderness. We know the story that the generation that left Egypt, they actually die in the wilderness because of their disobedience. They die because of lack of faith in God. They die because they fail to trust God. They died because they spoke negatively about the land to which they went to spy out. They died because of the bad report. They died for so many reasons. And we learned that we should use them as an example for our very walk. And so we learned that Israel, they were never meant to live in the desert. They were supposed to go through because it was really training ground for them to pass through into the promised land. They had to learn the different stages of life and then enter into their promised land. And so at the end of the journey or when the wilderness journey ends, as it relates to Israel, we see that at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, which we're going to get into next time we meet, we're going to be looking at different um, insights from the book of Deuteronomy, right? After the book of Deuteronomy, which is the last book of Torah, we see that it starts the book of Joshua, right? So at the end of the journey for Israel, when, when, they, when the wilderness journey ends for them, a new book begins, the book of Joshua begins for them, and it tells the story of the leaving, of, it tells the story of them leaving out of wilderness, crossing the Jordan, and now they are into the promised land. Right? And for us, the people of God, as it was or as it were for the children of Israel, when they finally entered into the promised land, so it will be for us. And so with that, you are encouraged on your walk on this journey. When your journey comes to an end, right? When the old is past and new life is going to begin. It's a new life that will, is going to take you into eternity. And so today, be strengthened in the word of God. Be strengthened on your journey. And remember that you are not alone. You are not alone. Sometimes when, when people go through life, they experience down moments. And they, some people just refuse to get up again. Right, But I want to say to you, in those down moments of life, you could be brave enough and you could be strong enough to say, though I fall, I shall rise again. Though I fall, I shall rise again. Right. So the, the, the eternal destiny 
to the, the end goal of the journey. The eternal destiny is a place when we will finally, finally, people of God, when finally we will connect, right, to our maker in, in, a, in a way that is just so totally different. And we will receive that which is called eternal reward, our eternal reward, our eternal destiny. And it, with this, I believe we can be encouraged or we should be encouraged to fight the good fight of faith and to lay hold on eternal life. There is a song that says the best is yet to come. We look at Israel's history and we look at the down times, but, but in it we know we see God's promise and we see his fulfillment and the fulfillment of his promise and promises that are yet to be fulfilled right so today may you be encouraged in the word of God and if you feel maybe at a place and you feel like you want to give up you want to let go no no is not the time for it but no is the time when we hold on to the word of God where we put greater um where we put greater what's the word I need to use greater emphasis on the word of God where the word of God is in us deep rooted in our hearts where the word of God is hidden in us where the word of God is like fire in us, where the word of God begins to burn in us. <clears throat> it was Jeremiah who, Jeremiah got discouraged at some point in time. To the point he said, I will not speak no longer of the word of God. But when he experienced God, he said, I feel like the fire shut up in my bones, right? I pray that the word of God will set you ablaze that the word of God will rekindle the fire in you and it will give you the urge to go on, to move on because the end goal of this journey is worth fighting for. It's worth fighting for, right? And so may God bless you richly today. Until we meet again, my prayers remain over your life. God bless you. Thanks for watching.